Fine. Good. Great. We'll we'll get started here. I guess we're okay to start. Well, yeah. Whatever you great. want. Great. Uh, sure. Great to be joined by by you two guys. Uh, great champions in in your uh, in your different fields. And uh, Dr. Patel, we'll start out with you. Um, kind of talk about uh, what you've had going on. All your uh, uh, your milestones and just uh, kind of why early screening is uh, just really important for men right now. Well, tomorrow uh, we'll do our 10,000th prostatectomy. So we have 10,000 men out there who we've treated for prostate cancer. And, and I want to thank them for their trust in me and congratulate them for their bravery in their fight. Uh, the key to all of this and to all cancers is really find it early. Um, if you find it early, there are so many more options. Sometimes you don't even need treatment, so that's the nice part. Um, but if you find cancers late, sometimes your options are limited. So I think guys, as they age 50, they should start talking to their doctor about screening options. And if you need, get tested. Find it early. And, and Cole Schultz, great to, to talk with you. You had an experience with this just uh, uh, a few years ago, and uh, kind of tell us about your uh, your early uh, detection experience. I always felt that I was invincible, and I never got a PSA test. Uh, I was never going to get prostate cancer. I go to the Mayo Clinic for a bad back. They run a variety of tests. They come back and said, you have prostate cancer. That, that is really a shock. My wife had had squamous cell carcinoma stage four of the throat 18 years ago, so this is not our first battle with cancer. But now the question is, what do I do? What decision am I going to make? There are 422,000 words in the English vocabulary. Choice is the most important one. The choice I made was a recommendation by another doctor to come see Dr. Patel and get it done biotically, and it was by far the best choice I made since I married my wife. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's great, and, and Coach, I know you've been a big proponent of of uh, spreading the word about early screening. But what specifically can you tell your um, your football friends, the the players you've coached over the years, these big, tough and uh, guys that uh, that need to be checked, that maybe uh, um, haven't been or are scared to get checked? What's the one thing you can tell them to uh, to sway them for the uh, early screening? The obligation you have to your spouse, to your children, to your friends to get the thing done. And, and uh, well, the main reason I'm here is I thought that my life would basically be over. I'm here to tell you, I've never been happier than I am at the present time. But I, wanted, I don't want to mislead you. I don't want you to get real optimistic. It's not going to improve your golf game. But the rest of your life, I find to be excellent. Sure. And, and Coach, you've seen uh, the changes in technology and sports and football over the years, but uh, Dr. Patel, what are some of the new technology changes that uh, you started using or you've encountered uh, as a surgeon recently? Well, prostate cancer is changing almost on a daily basis. There's a lot of new screening tests uh, beyond just PSA these days. We use 4K, we use PHI, we use MRI, so there's a lot of new technology on screening. And then in surgery, robotic surgery over the last 10, 15 years has really made prostate cancer so much easier for the patient. They're just in the hospital one day and home the next day, and it's also easier for the, for the doctor. It's so much more precise, and the outcomes have really proven to be very, very good for men. And, and along with the technology, doctor, what, uh, what do you do kind of to calm the, the fears of patients or potential patients and just kind of make the, the whole process as easy as possible? What kind of uh, um, techniques or what do you kind of say to your uh, patients? Well, I think I'm very upfront with our patients. You know, my goal is really to help them understand their d disease. I, you know, I always tell them if, if you can go out and tell the guy down the street what you have and why you made your decision, then you've probably done quite a bit of research. Uh, I think for us it's education. Uh, when a man comes in, they're often scared. They don't know what they have, and our team spends a lot of time educating them and, and comforting them and letting them make their own decision. I think that's so, so important. I think so too. And uh, Coach Holtz, uh, we uh, we kind of put a uh, our coaches during our lives on kind of a pedestal. People we listen to, they're almost like a, a father figure or a family member to us. Do you think, uh, like you've done, do you think other coaches should maybe take the lead and you know maybe not just prostate uh, cancer awareness or uh, or other causes like that? Do you think other coaches should take the lead and maybe kind of trying to uh, 
that to help people and, and direct them in the, into the right direction because coaches are uh, people that we've uh, we've listened to our whole lives. You kind of have a unique uh, a perspective and a unique, a unique position with people. Yeah, I definitely do. I believe that coaches can provide great leadership. I think also everybody in the entire country, the main reason we're here is if we can just save one life, if we can get just one person to go get tested that normally wouldn't, that's the whole purpose we're here. This isn't about me. It isn't about Dr. Patel. It's about making people aware of the difficulties you will encounter if you do not get your PSA tested. And if you do get it tested, be positive. Good things can happen to you. And this is the second leading cause of cancer death, trailing only lung cancer in American men. And, Doctor, why don't more men get screened? Why now does this seem to be coming to a head more than it has in the past? Well, I think somewhat there's some ambivalence about men getting health care. And there's also some fear and stigma around prostate cancer in the past. It used to mean that somewhat of a death sentence to men. Um, I think things have changed. I think men realize that now caught early, there are so many more options, and they make their decisions on their own life, and there is life after prostate cancer. And Coach Oates is uh, 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 definitely a living uh, representation of that. And uh, guys, where can we go as men that need uh, to be uh, screened? Uh, where can we go for more information and to learn more about this? Well, there's a plethora of information. There's obviously a lot of books out there. The American Cancer Society has a great website, the American Urologic Association. And if you want, we also have our own at uh, globalroboticsinstitute.com here in Florida. And, Dr. Last thing, how much uh, should we expect to see robots involved in our, uh, in our doctor's visits and our medical procedures into the future? This is really a growing trend, isn't it? Well, I think not only in healthcare, also in daily life, I think robots make sense. Uh, they're, they're very precise, they do what you tell them, and they help make your quality of life better. Great. Thanks for your time, guys, and we'll uh, make you. sure to help spread the word. Thank you. Thank you.